In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get up to speed in the bulk API 2.0. This API is very important if you want to send large amounts of data into Salesforce or retrieve large amounts of data from Salesforce. The bulk API is often used to send 100,000, 200,000 records into Salesforce to be ingested or processed. Or on the query side, you can see that it's generally used for querying about 2,000 records or more, so retrieving those records down and then processing them in another sort of system. All of these file formats will be CSV and there are a bunch of different limits, but make sure to check the limits for your specific org. I'm gonna be goofing off in a scratch org for today, so some of the limits may be different from what you are seeing inside of your org. And just checking that there's this limit page, all of these will be linked down in the description below where you can check out some of the bulk API limits inside of your org and what they are currently, right? Because I'm talking about these things right now, but some of these limits could change in the future. For the bulk API 2.0, there's generally two types of interactions that you're going to do. There's going to be an ingest where you are sending data into Salesforce where it can gorge itself. It's going to ingest all of that data and process it. Or there is the query when you want to extract data. Now these work very similarly to SQL queries, except they are on a very large scale. You're processing hundreds of thousands of records at a time and bringing them back into your other system. If we're taking a look at the documentation for ingest, there's a few things that we're gonna do. We'll walk through those. And then for query, there's also a few things that we wanna do. I'll run through this flow chart really quickly for the ingest, and then we'll jump back for the query as well. So this is from the Integration Accelerator program, and it kind of is just a visual of the API endpoints and the process, the steps that you need to take to run a bulk API 2.0 ingest. So we're going to hit this ingest endpoint. It'll give you a job ID. You're going to need to store that, then upload your data using this endpoint for batch close out your job. So letting Salesforce know that your job is done and ready to start and begin processing. You can monitor that job at this endpoint over here, just a regular ingest with the job ID. And then you can tell if your records were successful using these two endpoints over here. And then you can process, you can do whatever you want to do. All right, let's jump into it. We are logged into the Salesforce org over here. And then I'm gonna jump into my Postman actually to do all of this processing. So this Postman collection comes from the Salesforce developers. Uh, Postman, there's a whole set of Salesforce APIs that you have inside of this collection. And I, I forked the Salesforce platform API. There are many videos that go over this, some from Salesforce themselves that walk through this whole process of getting this set up. So now let's jump back into that workspace that I was working in. I have it forked over here and then we're going to go to bulk V2 and for the ingestation. So the creation of data, we're going to jump over here to the first step is jumping into this create jobs. And then we want to look at the body and set up the objects that we want to create. So I'm going to do account and this is going to be an insert on the account. So the object that I'm using and the operation, this could be insert, upsert, delete, and update, of course, the different types of operations, just the basic DML operations that you would want to do. Now from here, all this is going to do is you're prepping Salesforce, you're saying that this job is getting created and you get this job ID back. Inside of Postman using this collection, it automatically updates a bunch of stuff for us, but just in case, make sure to copy this job ID. We can even jump back in the Salesforce and see the open jobs that we have. And this is just the GUI interface from the Salesforce side, but if you're building an application, you can just use all of the values that you have inside. You would just use all of the API endpoints that we have over here. We have set up this job to insert a bunch of accounts. Now we need to actually upload the data that we want to send. We can see the endpoint over here and we're using a put method. And the most important piece is that we have updated this job ID. So this is the newest job ID over here. You could come in here and paste in that CSV and all of the data that it has here. 
or you could drop in a binary. Now this is just how it works in Postman, depending on how you're building out the application, you can set it up in different ways. So I've got this CSV file over here. Let's try to actually upload this. I'm gonna hit send and see if the processing, we've got this 201 created. So that means the data has been sent to Salesforce correctly, but it has not started processing it. The next step is to update or do a patch in the ingest endpoint with that job ID with the state being upload complete. So you could upload multiple documents or have a really big upload. You wanna let Salesforce know once this is ready. So we'll hit send. And now this is gonna go ahead and start processing. Now, this is a very small CSV that we have here. So we're not gonna actually be able to see all of the different status changes that it could go into. So there are other statuses like in progress and processing data and all that. So as soon as we start to read the info, from the job ID, it is going to basically say that it is complete. So I'm jumping over to get job info. It is a get method. We're putting the job ID and it is gonna be processing uh, down here at the bottom. Now, one thing that's happened, I'm glad this error popped up, is that we are getting a line error that is unable to read the lines of data inside of my CSV in, using this format. This is a good example. Let's just run through everything one more time. What I'm gonna add in is a special parameter or data value. Let's jump into the documentation so you can see that. If we look at query, create job, you can see all the parameters that you can put through. And the one I'm gonna use is this line ending so that we know that we're using a new line for the additional space that came through. Let me go ahead and pop that in here and I'm just gonna run through all of that process again, sending this through, copying the ID. Postman is automatically updating the ID for me, but just in case it wasn't, I'm popping that in here, hitting sending those values through again. Let's set this, do the patch to let Salesforce know that this has been completed. Let's send that through. And then now let's get our job info and we can see the state has just changed to job complete, which is exactly what we wanted. And we have a bunch of records that were inserted. We're getting the job info and we're seeing that the job status is completed. The number of, of records processed is five and we actually have five failed records as well. And that's most likely because I already had the record names inside of Salesforce. And, but this is a good example of being able to see the different success and fail endpoints that we have. So let's jump in here and just run the success endpoint. We see that nothing is coming back over here. And then let's run the fail endpoint. And we can see that there's a duplicate alert. Can I, there we go, that looks a little bit better. So here's the Salesforce alert error. And inside of your code, you would then want to start processing this to make sure that it is working successfully. Could also look back in Salesforce, do a refresh and see that all of our jobs have processed successful. Here's the most recent one. Here's the one that had failed before on the account where the data that we passed in was incorrect. Really quickly, let me just delete all those accounts so we can see a successful run. And you can just run through all of those steps one more time using the CRLF. Here's the upload and we can even do the upload like this. So just in Postman, we're uploading the raw data through here. Just copied and pasted that CSV in, send. And then we are going to say that our upload is complete. Getting our status. And this is what we're looking for over here. The state is job complete, number of records process, and then number of records failed is zero. So all of this is looking good. And then finally, jumping back to our success records. Here they all are with all of their IDs coming through. All right, we've talked a lot about how to ingest data, process large volumes of data inside of Salesforce. Let's now move into how to query data from Salesforce. Arguably a simpler setup. All you need to do is create a query job with a SQL statement. Then you're gonna monitor that job. And once that job is complete, you'll get the results in a CSV that you can take and process in a data lake sort of system so we've got the endpoints here, there's query, we get the ID back, set the ID that we're gonna be monitoring for, 
and then we're using this get endpoint the job ID slash results to get the final results. Let's check this out inside of Postman. We've got a few different things that we can set up here. Let's do our select statement, select ID name website from accounts. These values are optional. We can send them if we want. And even the content type, we know it's gonna be a CSV. So this is the bare minimum that we need to send this out. Of course, when you are making this, you want to have a more complex or selective query where you have where clause filtering, you're not pulling through extra data that you don't need. Let's go ahead and execute this. We see that this has executed successfully. We don't need to abort the job. Now we would use this endpoint here, this get with the query and the job ID to monitor the values that have come through. If this was a long running process, the state may say in progress and it may take a while to process down, but there's only a few records that we wanna pull through in this example. So now that we have that job ID, we can take it over here to get the results, send that out. And now we can see all of the different values that we have just queried back the Acme Corpse and the website coming through. Now, one of the fun things that you can do is actually set the max records parameter. If we do that, this will limit down the number of records that are coming through and we can see only the first two are coming through here. Now you may be thinking, okay, how do we get the next set? Well, in the header, there is a Salesforce locator value that you can select and you wanna check this param on and once we send this, we'll get the next set of two records in here. I'm gonna hit send, and it looks like I've got an extra space in there. Let's send that again. And we're getting different data, the next set of accounts coming through. And then let's get the next record locator, paste that in, hit send. And then now we can see that there are different ones coming through. The query is pretty straightforward. You're writing a SQL query and then retrieving the data back. Of course, you can delete your jobs just to make sure that they are cleaned up or Salesforce will do that automatically for you after seven days. There you have it, everything you need to know to get up to speed with the Salesforce Bulk API 2.0. If this was a little fast or you're looking for real world examples using these APIs, check out the description below where you can find out more about Cloud Code and the integration developer program that we have been working on that goes over a lot of these in more details. The bulk API is great for inserting a ton of data, but if you're trying to be super efficient with your code and insert parent and child records at the same time, check out this video that goes over how you can do that in Apex. As always, I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, I believe in you.